Have you been scrolling through many, many, many film podcasts thinking there's far too many of these? Or have you been thinking there's something missing? There's something we're not quite getting. A waffler from Northern England reviewing films, for example. Welcome to oh, Review It Yourself. No politics, no pandering, no point. Do all planes have a secret stash of sedatives to drug an unruly passenger? Just asking. Welcome to, ah, review it yourself. What are you bringing me into it for? (laughs) God knows. Uh, Welcome to review it yourself. Um, Today we're going to be talking rough air danger on flight 534. It's a TV movie from 2001. Don't know why I said it like that. And it stars Eric Roberts. It's a John Cassar film. There's a few other people in it. I'll be honest, but Eric Roberts is the main guy in it. So it starts off. um, We see some stock footage of a plane landing. It's real footage. It's landing gear collapses. And you see Eric Roberts like in flashback. And the guy's saying to him, you know, Oh, your landing gear's not down. You can't land. Literally, he says you can't land. He's like, but I've got no fuel left. Anyway, so, it, but he says, the plane's quickly low on fuel. I need to land. I've got no choice. I can't go around. Can't go to my alternate airport. Anyway, so then it skips forward a year, we find out, uh, to Airjet Airlines in London. And to be fair to them, right? To be fair to an American, is it American or Canadian? To be fair to a film from the other side of the Atlantic, um, it doesn't have any kind of horrendous British stereotypes that you you kind of go, oh, God, no. So, so fair play to them for that. <laughs> we meet the passengers, and yeah, there are. I mean, it's it's all the cliches under the sun. But who's bothered? Like, it, it's a good film, but we'll get to that anyway. So we've got newlyweds, they're airline employees, there's a mechanic and his, uh, his new wife. And to be fair, the most unrealistic part of this film is the fact that they refuse a free upgrade, upgrade to first class. I mean, or business class, whatever you call it. I, I've never uh, I've never flown in either. So, 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 you know, why why would you be like, oh no, we'll, we'll be fine back there. And they like giggle to each other. It's like, it's not, it's not the back of the bus. Like, or the back dark bit of the cinema where you're going to be able to, you know, I, I don't, I don't get what the, that bit was about. I was like, look, you've just, you could have sat in first class. They'd have brought you a bit of champagne. Well done. You've got married. Rest of your life together in happiness. You know, anyway, right. <laughs> it's got, this is why my reviews go on far too long. Okay. So we meet um, a, a soccer player and his agent. He's called Ty Connor. Um, I mean, I'd say football player, but then people on the other side of the Atlantic, they get all confused, and and I get confused, and so it's soccer player. We'll stick with that for now, because it is an American slash Canadian slash transatlantic film. Literally transatlantic. I mean, they don't cross the Atlantic. Oh, just get on with it, man. Right, anyway. So, there's a bunch of college kids as well, um, and... Anyway, the, the soccer agent's player is saying to him, um, oh, I, I, I'm going to make it, you know, I'm going to make it bigger than baseball in America. And I was like, really? Really? Like, that isn't going to happen. Like, soccer's never going to be bigger than baseball in America. Like, you know, that's like saying netball is going to become bigger than football in England. That's just never going to happen. That was a strange example. But, that, I mean, that's just what I think. Of course, we meet... Another stereotype, an absolute burke, uh, Mr. Matthews. And he is, uh, he's there because he's like the jet plane is in for repair. So he's having to, you know, slum it with the rest of us and sit in first class. Wouldn't be slumming it with me. I'd be, I'd be way back in, you know, standard class, coach class. Um, anyway, so, so we meet the air stewardesses. No, we don't mean the air stewardesses, Sean, you absolute fool. Right. They're not called air stewardesses. 
Oh, God. I've got a family member who was an air steward for years. He'll kill me. Well, no, flight attendants. No, the flight attendants. And she makes this point to this uh, to this Mr. Matthews. She's like, she doesn't take any rubbish. She just says to him, look, if you call, we don't, we're not stewardesses. You know, we're called flight attendants. If you call us that, we'll, we'll respond to you much more quickly. And she even says, so this is Katie, the, uh, watch it, the lead, the lead flight attendant. And she says, the, says to the younger flight attendant, the, uh, who's called Tracy, she says, look, like, don't even try the whole whoops, I've spilled a bit of wine on him. Like, don't bother. And she's like, no, I was thinking more. She says something like mac and cheese or some kind of tomato. Anyway, I didn't write that bit down. It doesn't matter. Whatever. So, <laughs> um, another cliche, Detective Muldoon. Um, I don't know if he's CIA, FBI. They never really say. They probably weren't allowed to specify. Um, he's on there. He's transporting a prisoner, Blythe. He's accused of killing his wife and partner. And Mr. Matthews, who's already been given like two or three scotches, before he even Father Plan even takes off, purely because he's just argumentative and well, not argumentative. He's just, oh, what's the right word? He's just, I'm I'm trying not to swear in this review. He's just, he's just one of them. You don't, you know what I mean? Just loud and brash, and I need this and I want this. And do you know who I am? One of those people. And Mister Matthews is like, I'm not flying with him. I'm not. I'm not flying with him on the plane. I'm like, oh god! Like you just want him to sit down and shut up at this point. Uh, Captain Ferguson. Uh, so what happens because they've been delayed so long in London? The original flight crew, uh, they've gone over there a lot of time. Um, so they can't. They can't fly. So they've exceeded the maximum flying hours anyway. So they go off, and we see Jack um, Brooks. He's the captain. He's like the company man. The white teeth, the blonde hair. He's on. He's literally on the front of the, of the, you know, the flight magazine for this airline. He's there, literally there, poster boy. And he's on there. He's a proper company man as well. But they don't have a flight attendant. Uh, not flight attendant. They don't have a. Oh Jesus H. They don't have a a, a co-pilot. Don't have a co-pilot. Oh, why was that difficult to remember? Okay. Um. So they need they need somebody, and. The one of the the captains at the airline is like, look, I can't get anyone. And then it turns out Mike Hogan, who's Eric Roberts' character, is is waiting. He's standby. He hasn't been flying for a year. Basically, he took the blame apparently for that for that uh, incident because the company were cutting back on fuel, and um, he, he was he, he had no choice. He had to land where he landed anyway. And he says to the guy, look, I'm I'm on administered leave. And he's like, look, you're going to have to. So he acts as the first officer, not the co-pilot. First officer? The amount of air crash programs I watch, and I can't remember first officer. So to be fair, I am recording this, like, in the morning, so early in the morning. So anyway, should just let me off on that one. I could edit, edit it down to make myself sound, you know, more clever, but what would be the point? Okay, so... Um, one of the kids who's studying, uh, he's like one of the college kids, he's studying, studying to be a doctor. Um, so Jack Brooks um, is the captain, and he's like, I'm the captain, I run a smooth ship, we do what I say and we'll be fine, got it? And now I'm thinking, this is poor, poor cockpit resource management. See, I'm, try I'm trying to see what I'm doing now, I'm compensating for sounding like an idiot earlier by throwing in a bit of knowledge, a little bit of stuff I know. Uh, so anyway, so cockpit resource management for people who don't binge watch air crash investigation programs. Um, people have a life, basically. Uh, <laughs> it's it's the way that you work if you're in a cockpit. So whether there's like a, a, a pilot, there's a captain and a, and a first officer. If there's a flight engineer, depending. Uh, it's the way they all work together and they communicate. No one, yeah, the captain's in charge, but no one is above anybody else in terms of... Um, if a first officer needs to take over to save the plane or whatever, it's, it's a way of talking to each other. You don't demean each other. You listen to it. Everybody's valuable. It's a, it's basically the upshot is it's a, it's a way to work together to achieve what you need to. Um, And the way the captain is, he's like, Oh, we can make up an hour uh, in the air. And he's like, that's a lot of time to make up in, which is what I was thinking. Like, that's a lot of time. You know, the heading over the Atlantic, uh, they'd been delayed a few hours and to top it all off, 
they're heading towards a storm. And Hogan's like, look, shouldn't we go around it? It'll be smoother for the passengers. Uh, it'll be easier for us. And, I mean, a lot of this is said between the lines anyway. So, And the captain's like, no, no, we're going to push on. We'll, you know, that would make us even more late. And he's just talking about figures and statistics and averages of, you know, this company, Atlantic Airjet, you know, we've got the best average time on time, all that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> reminds you that another on flight, uh, another on time flight from Airjet Airlines. Um, if anybody's ever been on that particular airline where you get that come over the minute you land. And, you know, he says to him, um, Oh, yeah, then the captain goes on this. So they've been delayed hours. And then the captain goes on this walk around of the plane to, like, meet and greet the passengers. And I'm like, surely you should be in there doing your pre-flight checks. See, I'm still dropping in that knowledge. Just not sound like an idiot. And and he walks around, meets all of, you know, meets the passengers and that kind of thing. And he's like, don't worry, nothing ever goes wrong on my flights. He's not English. Don't know why I did it like that. Anyway, um... And he says to, like, Katie, the head, um, the lead flight attendant, he says, oh, men like Hogan don't belong on this airline. He keeps the averages down. And I just wrote down, he's, he's just a self-important Burke. I'm going to use Burke in this review. And, you know, you just think, oh, he's a pro company man. And she says that to Mike, actually, when he goes, like, she says, oh, he's a real company man. Um, don't trust him. Tracy Nichols, she's the other flight attendant. She's feisty as well. Like the, the fair but firm, they don't take any rubbish. The flight attendants, they're great. Um, Mike Hogan, um, he thinks they've got a pressure leak because he sees the cargo light flicker. And obviously, we're watching the film, so we see like the door slightly open and then shut in. It's not sealed properly. The cargo containers haven't been held down properly. In fact, I think there's a dog death at one point where a dog just literally gets like it's in a cage attached to a big cargo thing and it just flies out i think um that was yeah so if, if you don't like dog deaths in the film don't don't watch this one i'll skip that bit anyway so the but well, i'm jumping ahead of myself um so the the captain's like no we're gonna push on everything's fine uh as you do you know and there's a cargo door uh fault they're going from london to boston and just before this cargo door blows off, they're talking to each other and the captain's like, you know, what's your favourite plane? And Mike says, it's a Lockheed TriStar, which is the L-1011. And he says, oh, that's a, you know, that's an old, um, that's an old technology. He says, well, you know, these fly-by-wires, you know, there's not a lot left if something goes wrong. You know, you, you need something, to, you know, need something to, to, to fly with. You need a little bit left to actually fly down. And the upshot is that Katie and Mike were in a relationship um, and then they haven't seen each other in over a year, presumably because of the backlash um, of him taking the blame and him being put on administrative leave and all that kind of thing. And I thought, well, he shouldn't have been on leave if the... I mean, you could have been, to be fair, but if the NTSB had have, um, or wherever he landed uh, had investigated it because if there was low fuel then he would have had no choice but to let anyway never mind so it's a it's a film just just enjoy it um <laughs> so it because because katie explains this to tracy she says oh like what happened in a bit of the downtime between serving the passengers and just looking after the cabin really um blythe has to go to the toilet with muldoon um there's a gun in the toilet bin uh, presumably somebody's helping him uh, and he puts it in the belt, but he puts it in the belt closest to Muldoon, like so Muldoon could. And you know how small those airline seats are. Um, and you thought if he leans over, he might like brush against the gun and be like, "What's that? Digging in my hip?" Uh, and, and, yeah. So anyway, whatever. Um, and so that Hogan and uh, Jack, the captain, are still talking, and he's saying, "You know, you you don't fight the system; you work within it." And Hogan's like, "Well, what's that get you?" Um, and he's like, I'll, I'll be captain of the Pilots Association, or the head of the Pilots Association before I'm 51. And Hogan's like, oh, good for you. Um, anyway, there's an explosive decompression. The captain's got up again. He seems to be very allergic to sitting down. Um, he gets knocked out. 
Um, so there's there are mist forms, there's paper slime all over the place. Because from what I understand, in an, in an explosive decompression, um, air can't hold on to like the moisture. Um, so out that goes, and that like, forms a fog. Uh, the detective also gets knocked out by falling baggages. You know, it's one it's one of those films like all the overhead luggage bins fail at once. The oxygen drops. And um, Blythe gets the keys, but Katie sees him trying to get them, so she keeps hold of them. Um, and Ka- uh, Mike Hogan is now the acting captain. Roger, the mechanic, who's just got married, goes to help. Um, he's a ground technician, so he can't help, help him fly, unfortunately. Uh, Mr. Matthews is just drunk and afraid. And the college kid, uh, like the one who's trained to be a doctor, um, he goes to, he finds Tracy. She's been knocked out. Um, the captain's got a concussion. So they've got control problems because the cargo doors come off and hit, I think, um, one of the horizontal stabilizers at the back. Um, and it's damaged some of the flight controls. Um, engine number two is idle, so that's not working properly either. So they decide they're going to head for Iceland. Uh, the friendly Irish controller um, from Shannon, he transfers them to uh, Keflavik um, and to the Icelandic um, control there. And so Airjet 534 is on an emergency approach. Um, the dialogue is definitely very filmy. It's like in an emergency like this, there's no way that you communicate with air traffic control like that. You wouldn't be like, oh, what's your name? Like, it, it doesn't, it wouldn't work like that. But it's a film and, you know, not everybody watches uh, programs about planes or reads about them like I do. So people would enjoy it. It's not massively unrealistic. I've seen worse, far, far worse. And you can definitely tell a bit of trivia to throw in. Uh, the captain that convinces Mike to help them at the airline out on this plane was a regal um, airline pilot with Air Canada who was brought in to kind of brush up um some of the scenes and make it more realistic, which you can definitely see. It's not, it's not horrendous. It's not perfect, but it's not horrendous anyway. Um, so the captain um gets uh, so Roger takes the captain, puts him in one of the seats, um, and the prima lads having a look at him, and he's got a concussion. He's knocked out. He tries to come back in. He's concussed. He's he's confused. He tries to turn them back around to uh, London, and it's like no, we're too far. We can't do it, and it. Mike pushes him out of the out of the cockpit and then they restrain the captain. Mike says there's an open cargo bay door. I need to check it out. Mr. Matthews again, he wants another scotch. Uh, and he apologises to be fair, he's like drunk, he's freaked out. Uh, Mike asks anybody if anybody's a pilot, can you please make yourself known to the flight attendants? And Blythe, the prisoner, presses that little bing, you know, the little light above your head to summon a flight attendant i mean i don't know if i've ever seen one anyway um so the passenger blad says you know i i've got my pilot's license um and mike's like right keep it level and he knows who he is he just says you know um you know we'll have to we'll have to we need to get back i need your help i can't do this without you because the blad's obviously planning to take over the plane with a gun but now the circumstances have changed uh, the autopilot, they, they get hit by lightning, and this is where it gets a little bit, you know, a little bit filmy. In the, um, uh, the autopilot goes crazy and won't let them turn around because Blythe's good with the computers. And um, he says they're trying to get it sorted out to reset this computer anyway. Uh, they manage to sort that out. Then they decide, you know, there's too much drag from this door. We need to block up the hole, as you do. And uh, so they ask for volunteers. Roger, the mechanic, goes down. Blythe goes down. The the soccer guy goes down, and his agent goes down. And his agent's like, "Well, if you die, there's no point in me living anyway." Uh, which I mean, surely he's got other players, but it's not anyway. Um, it's a nice gesture. And Roger sees the gun uh, because Dr- Blythe drops it whilst they're trying to sort stuff out. And he says that Roger would it help if I said I was innocent? He says it's none of my business. He says, well, I'm not innocent. Roger's like, why'd you do it? He's like, well, a person never knows how far they can go until they lose all their dignity. They took my children, my business, everything I had, his wife and her new partner. And I went crazy and he throws the gun out. He doesn't matter anymore. You see Mike and Katie talk um, and... No, no, I'll tell a lie. Katie's talking to Tracy um, and saying our relationship was over a long time ago. 
ever hear of a pilot and a flight attendant making it all the way. After the accident, he changed, he started to withdraw, and one day he just upped and left. And she hadn't seen him until tonight. Uh, Blythe ends up uh, helping them remove some debris so they can get the, the hole blocked with big cargo containers. And he gets um, blown out of the plane um, and sacrifices himself to to, to save them, really. Um, just as they get ready to land, um, Jack gets free again. And the football player gets him sat down. Uh, and Katie actually helps Mike land the plane. Uh, well, helps him communicate with air traffic control and stuff like that. Mr. Matthews. Oh, yeah. So, so I forgot to say this. So, it just after he's been like, like shouting, I want another scotch. She takes him another scotch, Katie, but she puts some sedatives in it. But she just goes in this little, in this little cubby hole, this little cupboard, takes out like this, <laughs> takes out this medicine bottle and just like undoes the pill and like puts the stuff in his drink to like knock him out. And I'm, that hence my introduction of like, where'd that come from? Anyway, you know. Um, I do, I do love this song. To be fair, um, and Mister Matthews is like, "Oh, wake me up when we get to the gate." Like he's not bothered at all, but he thanks Katie on the way out. And I'm thinking, you wouldn't thank him, mate. You know, if you have to do a drug test for work and it comes back like you're full of sedative or God knows what she's filled you with, you know. Anyway, the trainee doctor asks Tracy out for a drink. Uh, he's called Sam. We find out right at the end. Um. You know, she thanks Roger, and Roger's like, oh, you should thank Blythe. The detective's like, oh, who'd have guessed he'd do something like that? Um, Jack stretched it away. Uh, Katie's, oh, yeah. So the flight, uh, the air traffic control lady from the the Iceland uh, control tower, she's, like, comes down, and she stood there looking at Mike from afar. Um, and... You think, and then Katie like walks up behind and puts her arm around Mike, and I'm like, yeah, you've got some competition. Like she's marking her territory, you know. Back off, air traffic control lady. Uh, that you know this this pilot's mine. <laughs> um, yeah, and then that you know that's how the film ends. You know they are, or they have a little kiss when the plane lands. Of course, that was never in doubt they were going to get back together. Um, and to be fair, yeah, the cliches are there, but you know it is a TV movie, and there are some a few bits of CGI that are a little bit ropey. You know, but it's twenty-one year old this film, and you gotta gotta let it off, really. You know, I loved this film as a kid. It's one of those films that always seemed to be played. Like, do you remember, like when Sky Movies first came out, before it became like Sky Movies premiere and all that kind of thing? It was like Sky Movies one, two, and you had like TCM and all those kind of ones. Um, other TV channels are available, and you used to get films like this. So you'd get films like uh, Killer Flood, the day the dam broke which I've reviewed with um, Hallmark of Greatness. Um, you know, it's um, it's stuff like that. You know, you think uh, films like that, they used to come out. Um, there's another one that I'll be reviewing soon called Trapped, Buried Alive, um, Rough Air, Danger, Rough Air on Flight 534. There was all these kind of films that came out that you thought, like, were terrible. And you knew they were terrible, even as a kid, but, you just enjoyed them. They were just a, a nice 90 minute film to watch. You enjoyed it. Um, you know, and a good rainy day film, if you will. You know, yeah, this film's exaggerated. Yes, it's over the top at times. But, you know, you could find something else much worse to watch. Much, you know, much more waste of your time. Uh, there's some decent performances in here. And you do root for the characters by the end. It's, it feels, you know, it's a good feeling at the end when they land and they're all safe. I mean, it was never in doubt, really. But, you know, I enjoyed it. You know, Alexandra Paul's great in it as, as Katie. Eric Roberts is great in it. Um, the, the oddest thing about a film like this now is how easily accessible the cockpit is. Because, you know, you can gather this was filmed 2000 and since 2001, for obvious reasons, um, you can't just walk into a cockpit anymore. Not that you could before 2001, but it was a lot easier as this film showed to for people to get in and out and oh we need help with this and we need help with that. I mean, they used to keep the door open on some flights, you know, um years ago. I mean you used to be able to smoke on planes, a lot's changed really. So still dropping in that knowledge you're noticing. Trying to make myself feel better for getting first officer. Anyway, um yeah. Great film. Well not a great film. I mean <laughs> It's not a hill I'd die on, you know. I wouldn't say this is my best, you know, this is the best film ever. 
But uh, I've had a look at some reviews and it, it certainly took a bit of a paste in that I don't think it deserves. So, bye. I really enjoyed it. So definitely, definitely go give it a listen. Um, I will be back with another review. Um, I thought I'd throw in a review that was on my own. I've been doing an awful lot of collaborations lately. I, I do love doing collaborations with people. And I've had some, I've had some great guests on. I've guested on somebody else's now. I screen, you screen for movies. And when we talked about the Batman, so go check that out. But I've, I've you know, done loads of collaborations with people and um, and I have, I've enjoyed it. But I thought, you know, it is call review it yourself. So I thought it was time to, to put out a review. I just thought I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's listened, whether you're a fellow podcaster, somebody who's, you know, just looking for an interesting film, podcast hopefully this comes under that category i i feel like i, I don't say thanks enough for listening uh, we're closing in on 700 total players as of right now so yeah doing a lot better than i thought it ever would i can't believe so many countries are listening anyway um so i'll be returning i've got um a podcast with aaron from time to talk titanic podcast as you know, if you've been listening to some of my podcasts or you've followed me from the beginning, um, that was always a way that I might go in terms of talking about Titanic. We're going to review Titanic 1953. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. Also, I've got Inception coming up with uh, Savon from Coffee and Comments YouTube channel. Uh, we've got absolutely all sorts coming up next week. Bill Reads Bad Reviews returns. Um... <laughs> I was going to go, yay. Uh, yeah, I I love his podcast. Um, we're reviewing The Mummy 2017. Oh, I, I do apologize, Bill. We've also got, uh, I'm reviewing um, How to Behave in Britain, a wartime um, film with Cassidy Cash from That Shakespeare Life. And I'm also um, going to be going back on the Wait What podcast sometime in May to discuss Jim Carrey, so I'm really looking forward to that. So absolutely loads to stick around for. Um, there's a lot, there's a few more podcasts that I've had to rearrange and other people have had to rearrange, so there's a lot more coming up. So, yeah, thank you once again for for listening, and I, I, I do, I really, really appreciate it. You can find us, where are you listening to your podcasts, and you can find us on the social medias. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.